Gentlemen, how are we doing? Close again, aren't we? Oh, no, and I feel as though like, I'm on BT or summer, you know, like side at pitch. Murray Walker. Hold it microphone. I'm just waiting for Roy Keane to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Keane. <laughs> <laughs> All good, you? Yes, good. We're in Leeds. We are in Leeds. For our first live show, we're on, on stage. It's hell of a venue, isn't it? It's lovely, yeah. isn't it? Can you pan out, Matt? Your Royal box up there. Do you think people have paid extra for the? Oh, that's top dollar price. That is. I think so. Oh, I, I wonder yeah. if it, I wonder if they. It's like Michael McIntyre, isn't it? You know, when they take the phone off them. Yeah. Have you seen it? Are you holding yours or are you resting it on the derby? Uh, a little bit of both. What you've gone for? I've gone for the knee. knee. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? It's, it's not. It's not the longest thing to ever done. Tonight. Yeah, yeah, actually. Good turnout, isn't Good. it? First, first proper one back, isn't it? Leeds. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we've yeah. got a full house. All right. Almost. Friday night in Leeds. What we don't, what, 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 what we learnt from last, the last live show is we'll spread them out a little bit because they're quite tiring. So we've got one Friday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday. We just, uh, we just kill ourselves, don't we? But We're the, machines, aren't we? There's not a, the numbers, not there. The quantity's not there, is it? So we we've got to keep, keep the appetite going. Mm. So what everybody a, wants to come to these now, don't they? What about that prick, by the way, Richarlison? I like him, me. Eh? I like it. You've changed your tune. I know. I like him now. <laughs> like, because I saw, I, I saw, bloody, I heard Agbon Law say, you know, he'd kick him, which is fair enough, yeah, kick him. But I heard somebody else was saying he should be punished. He should oh, be punished. No, not, not punishment, but I think, I think to be fair, the worst thing about it is, is the lad who's done him, it must be thought, I wish I'd have got him better. Yeah. Do you know, like, you think, I, I want a dead leg him here, so he's out for yeah. two weeks. One of the lads who did the, the bike ride has set up a GoFundMe to pay the fine for the lad yellow card. Oh, yeah, which is it? <laughs> I'm not sure what they Eight get fined, but he's asking for a quid off all the Forest fans. <laughs> <laughs> nice little learner for him, like. Yeah, he's going to, yeah, he's going uh, to pay the, I think it's about 12 quid, isn't it? Is it? 12 quid for the, the yellow card, he's going to make fucking 40 bags. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though, it makes it interesting. Do you know it? what? A few characters on the field. I wouldn't mind it, Chris, right? But he came on sub, didn't really contribute to the game. He cut, yeah, he did. He did kick ups and then and then got exactly. put on his ass. You know, if Henri did it in his pomp. Yeah, when he was just need, taking you, the piss. You need out a bit more about yourself, like at least in your start game. the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've scored a couple, maybe. But come on, mate, coming on for a cameo and then taking the piss. Shit. Mm. What do you think about um, celebrating when Arsenal are getting a bit of stick, aren't they? I feel like a right tip with this. <laughs> you look like Ce- one. Celebrating games and that. I don't, I don't but, but Liverpool were doing what? that. Celebrating winning? Liverpool were yeah. fucking, they're all, Liverpool used to be again. all in front of Cop, didn't they? Whee, yeah, whee. It's a farce. Pe- they're getting stick for beating, was it Villa? No, beating Fulham. They were 1-0 down and they end up turning it around, scoring in the last couple of minutes. And they say, talk sport and all them are saying, oh, it's a shambles, shows how far the demise of Arsenal Football Club celebrating like that. They just won five Bullshit. on bounds. Lem- Absolute so, bullshit. Yeah, sure that's that's a spot on if top. You've lost five, on, five on bounce and you win, then you yeah. If you if you've won, celebrate. That's What's a, wrong with that, that's a spot on top. Spot on foot, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you can you celebrate. Can't if judge you celebrate. people for celebrating. It's no, it's a shambles, Chris. Oh, absolute shambles. Is there what else happening? How was your toenail? It's all right. I got my toe. Oh, funny. But I had. A <laughs> oh yeah. I had uh, an interaction with a with a, with a fan. Of the show, right? On uh, I went to Bolton Food and Drink Festival on Saturday night. You've you've been to one before, haven't you? But loads of food stalls, band on, a uh, few bands on, and uh, my mate with her who always takes piss about the podcast. Like he says it's shit. Yeah. Like, he's, he just say, oh, the Neanderthals talking about shitting in shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so he, said, he, he might have a point actually, but, <laughs> but it, he, he listens and he likes it really. But he just likes to, you know. What's his name? A bit. I'm not. I won't give his name. What's his name? Don't John. give him the attention. John, you yeah. fucking tit. So he, he he were giving it a bit whilst we were there having a few drinks. Anyway, about about half nine, ready for home. We're walking back, getting a taxi, and we kids as well. Like we've all been with, with kids and stuff. There's one food stand still open, and one of the girls decides to get some to eat on the way back. So I'm stood there waiting, and I'm watching something unfold at the food stand. There's two lads and a girl arguing. Like the, one of them's pushed in front of the other or something. So I, I, I get, I stand back and get the kids because I can see this is bubbling. Like this is, and the two lads walk off, and she's not finished. She goes back for more. 
shouting in his face. Next minute, she poof, slaps his chips out of his hand. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, oh, mayo, chips, ketchup no, all over. Slap me right face, but not <laughs> yeah. my chips. Leave me jockeys his out, chips have scattered everywhere. He shoves this woman. Not... Not so when when he's not not hard, but he's just pushed her back, and I thought, oh flipping next. So I've got the kids around me, thinking this isn't good. This this woman's boyfriend seen what's going on. You should have seen him coming down runway, when he's seen what's going on. He's going tense at dozen, and the way that he was approaching, I thought he was going to come out with some Chuck Norris shit. Like he's coming at <laughs> pace, and he's and he's got he's in he's intent he's, he's intent on damage. But he went down like Chuck Berry. He were on floor in about two minutes. What, he got filled in? <laughs> no, well, he got, he, he got a slug to the nose. He's coming in with a crane <laughs> kick and he got slugged to the nose. So down what, on he's, what you're saying is he's coming too fast and he's left he's himself coming, off Yeah, there. he, he came in like a crane. Like, and he, he ended up on floor. Um, but like I said, I've stood back with kids. But, you know, you don't want to get involved with anything like that, do you? But my mates who I mentioned, John, he's gone over. Separation. You know, well, go on, on your way. Separated up. Pulls this lad over, bloody nose and everything. He's just saved his life, baby. He's, he's saving him a good a good hiding anyway. Pulls him over. He's come up, nose is bleeding. He looks up, he goes, Chris, hey, how are we doing? <laughs> he says, can I have a photograph? <laughs> and gives me me the phone. <laughs> gives him the phone. He just, he just saved him a kicking. Next minute, he's standing back like David Bailey. <laughs> Take a photo, you on this blooded fan? Yeah. Did he, did he wipe the nose? He wiped or? the nose. He wiped the nose, but, he, but the timing was perfection. <laughs> the timing was pure perfection. What, what, your life is it, just like, there's always something going off, isn't there? Something you never just have like, just normal, run the nose, mundane. Nice tea. D- d- nice d- tea. Days, do you? I mean, it with toe as well. So that was, that was sad. So, so did, did that just diffuse the situation Oh, then? yeah, it diffused the situation. Well, they, they, them two had gone. They, they'd gone. My mate had done, done a good job separating it. He'd, he'd, he'd done a good job, you know, diffusing the situation, saved this lad's life, and then he, he, he got photographed duties. I want to see this picture. The big, so yeah, he's so yeah. obviously listening. Yeah, if, you, if, if you're out there. But the, the one thing I'm concerned about, did he get another... Bag, bag of, of chips. chips? No, but they went. No chips. No was chips. They were no well. hungry and all. Do you were know what they were like? No, they were... Um, they were tornado chips. Have you seen them? With a bit of spice. Yeah, they were one potato, and then they peel them in a whirl, and then fry them. So it's like chips on a stick. Oh, yeah. See, I'm f- scattered uh, everywhere, all over the floor. Then. All over cobbles. Yeah, they were. I think they might going to just try one pot pallet. <laughs> see if you wanted a portion. <laughs> try that on the pallet, by the way. The Kel toy. Oh, I tell you what, we've got a, a message from this. This episode is coming right at you from Beer Fifty Two. The lads are back, aren't they? Yeah, the lads are back. Now, if you don't know what Beer 52 is, they are the number one beer company for your delivery beers. In the world, by the way. In the Chris, world. In my opinion. In the world. And I value your opinion, Chris. And as part of the show, you can get a free case. We're well, talking free case. Just oh. lift a few. Throw on. Get them out, Chrissy. Eh? We've got a bull we roarer. A roar, a bull roarer. Try it, but get it. Get that on your gills, John. So what is it? 5 95 Five ninety five. You get the box on your doorstep. And this month, like we said, from across the world, it's Ireland. Oh, Some of the yeah, finest yeah, beers cool. from the Emerald Isle. Oh, I'm looking forward to digging in. Quick question for you. What's a hectolitre? Um, it's what they measure. Beer in, isn't it? Well, this brewery here currently produces about 2,500 hectolitres a year. Wow. So I, I don't know if that... Is that a lot? It seems a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, though, John. Well, that's what they're there for. That's exactly. What yeah. I'm you've learning, learning. You've learned something there. Learned, you've yeah. got some nice beers. You sat on the toilet. You've just learned about the hectare He's got meters. Nuts, nuts in his belly button. I'm <laughs> sat on the toilet right now. <laughs> and then his chin. <laughs> so, yeah, all you've got to do is pay the £5.95 by visiting www.beer52.com slash kosh. And you'll get them 10 free beers on your doorstep for £5.95. And you can cancel at any time as well. Yeah, if you cancel it, if, it, if it's not for you, or you can cancel at any time. Yeah. No, no obligation. So that's www.beer52.com slash kosh. Chuck, there's another one here, Bigger. Yeah, you want another? Aye, ah, there you go. Well, that's a free By the way, can we speak about Don? Yes. What a that is top. I was right, one I? Top tier. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, I've not listened to it, but yeah. 
remember it. It was good, really wasn't good. he? I, I, I just wish we'd have got more out, more out of his impressions. I know, yeah. Because you could tell he had he had some in the bank. And, and the other thing is, when we finished as well, he was telling us some stories about his prank calls and mm. stuff, which we should have got in the episode. I think it, was, it was dodgy territory, weren't it? Because he said he's, he's got a Mick McCarthy uh, impersonation. But if he does it and it's not great, we've got to then put a fake laugh on, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. We don't, but we don't have to. Don't do Superb. that often, do we? No. We like so, to keep it real. Exactly. That's but why we're But it, it, it was top notch, wasn't it? Yeah. Great guy. Thing um, is, since it's been released, fans are still coming on from loads of different clubs. In. Did you ask him why he hates so and so? Yeah, there's been a few more mentions since, haven't there? He hates the full championship. He hates everybody. <laughs> he hates everyone, which is surprising for such a lovely man. <laughs> it's just, uh, I wouldn't say you're a hater. No. Nah. I thought it was right what he said about Forrest when he said when he said to the fan, "What was the last? When was the last team that you liked watching?" And he said, "The one with Collie Moore." Yeah. He's just saying that how it is, isn't he, Chris? You know that. Keeping it real like us. That's all you've got to do. Who have we got this week? Malcolm Christie this week. Oh. This well, is a good well, episode. It? This is a, It's a two-parter. And oh, it is needs, it? Yeah. And it needs to be. Uh, yeah, it's a, a really good story. And a story that a lot of people won't be aware of. Like, I, I mean, myself, like, well, what, what happened to Malcolm Christie? Because mm. he, he was one of them, wasn't he, where... Just kind big, of what he like. It was like he was one of the next yeah. big things, wasn't yeah. he? And he come from non-league, and which we'll we'll, we'll get into. But um, the second half was very sad, wasn't it? Emotional. What can happen? Yeah, emotional. You can see he was emotional talking about it. Yeah, but it's a great episode. But we'll we'll like we'll like Malcolm, Malcolm tell his tale. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> should we get him in? Yeah, come he's on booked, then, Malcolm. Oh, well. we've got uh, we've got two more live shows after this as well, so you can be at the next next two. He was at Bradford. Bradford Wednesday the seventh. Middlesbrough, Sunday the 11th. Yeah. See you there. He's down now for fuck's sake. Come on, Malky. Do we get pissed before this show or what? <laughs> Let's get bloody pissed. I'm looking forward to getting into this. Sunday League to Premier League. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Some journey. Yeah, in incredible journey. I think it was only kind of after you reflect back on your, your career that you realise... Wow, is it? Uh, you know, has anyone really taken that journey and, and elevated themselves from relative obscurity from from where I was? Because you know, at 19 years old, you know, when I became a, a Premier League footballer in the April when I turned 19, I was still working at Summerfield Supermarket in Stamford. So to stacking go stacking shelves, stacking shelves. I worked in the the dairy department of Summerfield <laughs> Supermarket. <laughs> Dairy assistant. I used to put the milk out, sausages, cheese, yogurts. And at so, that point, were you? What what level are you playing at? at the same so time? in the April, I would I'd had just started like um, a trial match for Nuneaton Borough. So they were in the Doc Martins Premier Division, and at the same time, I was also playing for Deeping Rangers, which were in the Peterborough um and a uh, saturday league as such and i was playing for my brother's fruit and veg company uh, called paulie's so my, <laughs> my, my brother and his mates got a team together in the peterborough sunday league and and i just joined them basically and and so i was effectively in the april i was playing for three teams deep in rangers paulie's and just starting for Nuneaton borough what, what was what's the doc martins is that conference back there it's the one below oh. the conference yeah because straight away I think of Vardy, but even Vardy's was a gradual progression, really. Yeah. When he went conference, Fleetwood, yeah, Leicester, Leicester. League One, champ. But to go from where you were, yeah, to be dropped into a Premier League team, yeah. And at that point, have you got any? Can you even contemplate aspirations of being a Premier League footballer? Nah. Because we were all like, we were going out on the Saturday night, having a few drinks, and it was just a laugh on a Sunday. Do you just know what I mean? Crap. But I, I used to like it because like we're, I was a good team and we used to score goals. So my record for Paulie's is I played 12 matches in the Peterborough Sunday League and scored 31 goals. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, I, I, my new, not I, went, I went on a run. <laughs> I was looking because my dad, funny enough, my dad in my last season when I became a pro, he kept a record of every game I played, the date, um, who we played against, home or away, and how many goals I scored. I was looking at that before I came here, funnily enough, because I thought, well, I'll not probably produce my uh, me Premier League goal scoring record because that's probably not as impressive <laughs> as I can <laughs> fucking produce my Sunday League. I went on a run of scoring 16 goals in um, four games. 
that's how I got my name like mentioned. And when I was playing for Deep in Rangers, I'd sort of, you know, you kind of feel like you maybe found your level a little bit because you're doing well. Okay, you're not maybe excelling, but I was quite happy at that time, like being in the Deep in Rangers first team. That was my aspiration as a footballer. Of course, you, you dream of becoming a Premier League footballer. You know, it's every, every kid's dream. It was, it was my dream from the age of six. But like, would anybody thought that within six months that I'd be signed a three-year contract in the Premier League? And that's just mad. like, mad. honestly, when I look back, it's ma crazy mad how that, that came about. Just going back to that, that, sorry, Chris, just going back to that part-time job, do they put the milk with the <laughs> longest date at the bar? So it depends, it depends is, is how- You get, you get how, taught that, right? Whatever's out of date first, put it to the front for people just coming and picking the milk up. Yeah, it's, you, you're told it's part of your job. You, you, you've got to. You've Sounds got like to, a relative <laughs> way to create. No, no, if you're putting stuff out on the shelves, the idea is to take all the stock off the shelf, put the best date stuff at the back, and then replenish the older days at the front. Sneaky. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Changing lives again, aren't we? Uh, so, uh, there'll be no cost uh, listeners always. getting any milk out that's going out of date in a couple of days. Right. Serious question Do you always look at the date on milk? Yeah. 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 And I do look at the back. You always at the back. Yeah. yeah. You're knocking other cartons off, right? Uh, You're all the way through. Oh, I'm just. Fly by, grab it, choo, carry but, on. And, and as well, not many people know this, really, that, you know, the, the, the metal the stacking things are in, whatever they're called, you know, where the milk's in. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're struggling, there's one right at the back, you think, oh, I can't get that. The, the uh, metal uh, thing's on a spring, so you can actually just lift them up, ping, 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 and then get to the back. Oh, I mean, mine's oh. See, I tell you what. <laughs> so <laughs> next time you're in a supermarket and you see what, even if it's got nothing on it, you think, oh, well, that can't be moved. Just ping it up. It's on a bit of a. You, you, it's quite. It's quite therapeutic to do that. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know when I was asking the question, you were like, "What the fuck?" No, no, I was yeah. Yeah. no. Yeah. You do that next Life time in the lessons. supermarket. Do yeah. that, and you go. Oh, I can see that now. I can get. I can get to that good date at the back because I know how to lift. <laughs> I'm these gonna get front local as me for taking shelves down. <laughs> <laughs> By so the way, you know, it's, what, it's taken deep in 20 years to replace you as well. Because Luke Steele's just signed. I've heard. Yeah, as, as a natural goal scorer. I've heard. Yeah, I listen to Luke's podcast and. You know, I think there was, it's quite funny when you, you listen back and people that you kind of, you know, maybe from the local area or things like that. And yeah, you, you're telling me that he's up front for my old team. Like Deacon Rangers, <laughs> Deacon Rangers in my heart. Like I joined Deacon Rangers at under 14, like under 14s, 15s, 16s, 17s, 18s. I played in the, the B team, the A team, the reserve team and the first team. Like Deacon Rangers was like everything. They, they taught me Where it started. like, yeah, everything. So yeah, to see, like, he's, he's now doing what I mm. did, like, all them years ago. It's quite funny, really. So were there no, like, sort of academy teams that are all, like, sniffing at 13, yeah. 14? And... No, not really. The, the funny story is, my school teacher, a guy called Stuart Gray, uh, bless his heart, he's, he's passed away now, he was a football, he was a scout. My, my PE teacher at school, at secondary school, was a football scout. For who? For, he was for Bristol City, and he did some scouting for Peterborough United as well. The local team. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. So you could probably say, I mean, I always think to myself when I, when I made it in football, I think, what must Stuart be thinking? Like, he was my PE teacher. <laughs> like, the one that got away. I don't, well, I don't know. Like, I spent... So he used to, like, in, in PE, he just used to throw me a ball. He said, right, you organise the, 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 the matches and we'd, we'd play football. That's all we do at PE. And he would just go in. We'd never see him. And he'd just, like, trust us. And... Like, I don't know, my dad always, my dad, my dad always used to say, so why didn't he like recommend you anywhere or anything like that? Um, yeah, it was just a bit of a, it was a weird one that my school teacher for, for year, for like five years of my life, didn't think that maybe I was capable of making anything of myself. <laughs> and you know, my dad used to reward me. So my dad had give me a fiver for every goal I'd score. Like at 18, like, yes, I was earning money at the supermarket, stuff like that. But a five or a goal, I was like, that was like, oh, do you know what I mean? I was wanting to score week in, week out. What about for Paulies? Did they like an apple? Yeah, yeah no, he did. An apple, yeah. an apple a goal? <laughs> no, no, the five or a goal. So like, do you know what I mean? Like earning like a few hundred quid from my dad just by scoring goals. Because he, he knew that if I was scoring goals regularly, they would, they, I'd have the headlines. Do you know what I mean? But they'd always have a write-up. And if I did well and score goals, then I'd have the headline. And I always used to remember watching the Premier League fixtures or, you know, when you'd open the newspaper. And I always used to dream, oh, I wonder one day if I could open and have a look at the fixtures. Because that's how you looked at the fixtures, wasn't it? And you see what the attendance was and things like that. You'd look in the newspaper. And I was thinking, wonder if I'd ever have my name one day. Christie there. Oh, wouldn't that be a, amazing? I used to see it in the, you know, deep in ranges or whatever. And that was my dream. It was like, oh, one day maybe I, I could get my name there. 
So it was just like, it was, it was, and it was a total random, like how I got spotted because I played against this, it was a team called I United and there was a defender that I played against and like, I must've given him a run around to be honest. I don't know. Cause he ended up, he knew somebody who knew somebody else that recommended a, a guy called Bill Berry, who was just a local scout, not for anybody really in particular. He just used to do a bit of freelance. If he spotted a player, he'd like, oh, who, who do I think I can like put him into? And it just so happened it was Nuneaton Borough that was the team that he ended up sort of spotting me for. Just a bit, yeah, I come off the pitch and there was this guy speaking to me wanting wanting to like go to Nuneaton Borough. And I hadn't really heard, like Nuneaton Borough for me at the time, you know, I hadn't really heard. I didn't even know where it was in the country. No idea. I remember looking at uh, <laughs> getting the map book out when I got home. So it's not too far away. Do you know what I mean? It's commutable. But for me to go from there, it wasn't like a professional club. It was semi-professional non-league you know to them to go into that environment or to sort of play a match from with them that was like oh my god like i remember think looking them up and it was like god they play in the fa cup they play in the fa cup <laughs> so it really you really were that sort of not starstruck but you really were like fuck me what's happening here yeah, because at Deep and Rangers, there was no crowd. Yeah, there was the pet, there was the families watching you. There was yeah. no, there was no like, oh, you, you know, the whole of Deeping came out to watch Deep and Rangers. <laughs> you know what I mean? So even for me to go to Nuneaton Borough and there'd be a, st a stand or a crowd, like, more, you know, somebody actually, there's gates to walk. You know what I mean? It was just like that yeah. for me was, oh my God. People like, paying to watch you. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, that was like such a massive step for me. But, when I look back, that that leap gave me everything that I needed to have the footing and the and the sort of give me the confidence to then go on into professional football. And like I just remember just thinking, looking around and and like walking out. You know, we, we, you had a you, you walked out. You know, you walked you walked out when there was fans around you. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I just remember you just get out to the back of a van. Like, and like, you used to just walk, you know what I mean? And just things a piss like, at the side of the van. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> your boots on. And, and just for me to, to sort of, to do that and to, to hear, to hear, a, to hear a crowd. Yeah. Like I was a big football fan as a kid, but didn't go to many games as a kid. So hadn't really experienced what it felt like to be a football fan. Even though I watched, I was a massive football fan. I didn't go to many games and watch and be experienced of how that sort of the, the adrenaline of the crowd could feed into a player. So I was experiencing all that, like for the first time, it wasn't going to be any, it wasn't like I was going along there and suddenly they were going to sign me. I, I had to like prove me. I felt like I had to prove myself. So I like played, I, I played well and I scored goals and things. And then, and then like you talk, they're talking about like offering me a contract, a fucking contract. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? I was pay. I was, my dad was paying to, to play at deep in Rangers. Then all of a sudden, what they're going to pay me to, to, to play Football. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to sit down with you and you're just going to discuss a contract. I'm like, Fuck it. I'm working at the supermarket at the time. I'm thinking, ooh. And the, the, the guy at the supermarket had just had a chat with me about potentially doing a trainee management course. Oh, decisions. So I was like, ooh, I've done me two years business. and Yeah, I can see this. That could be a route through to me. And, and I was like, ooh. I'm not, I don't know. So anyway, we sat down, we did, me and my dad sat down and Brendan went to a local pub and he said, I said, I've got a bit of a problem here, Brendan. I said, the supermarket, you know, they're offering me, you know, potential trainee management courses here. So it's all dependent on what you're going to offer me here. Things like that. So he, he showed me it's £135 a match, £10 goal bonus. What were you earning? At Fucking work? more. Yeah. More. So... It was a little bit of a tough decision to do that. But Brendan said, look, Mally, he said, whatever you were going to earn at the supermarket, I'll match it at the end of the month. So <laughs> go back and tell me what you were earning the last few months at the supermarket. And regardless of this contract, I'll make sure that you earn the same amount. <laughs> Just imagine him beforehand. We need him. Tell him we'll match him a field. Tell him we'll match him <laughs> a field. Comical. Honestly, <laughs> fucking you know, comical when you look back. You think, <laughs> what? So he, the, the club were going to pay it, and he was going to pay it himself. Or no, he was going to work. He was going to work it round. Whether it was a win bonus, yeah. it was going to be like yeah. inflated or a goal bonus or whatever. We, we we put pen to paper on a on a like a year year contract. It was to to end that season. So when I was at the April, and it was for the next season as well. Um, and what and, sort of? What sort of money are the rest of the team earning? I've absolutely no idea. Similar or? Don't know. No Wouldn't idea. have a clue. Well, and I went, still giving you a fiver. 
At, at that level? No, he, no, no, he, oh, so. he, he stopped at that thing. So, it, so really, he'd made no. a, a £15 rise, really, because no. he was saving his five or everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, the, the thing, my dad used to do the commuting. So obviously my dad was paying the petrol money because ah. it was like an hour and a half ride over to um, Nuneaton. So it wasn't, the thing is as well, to take that step, it wasn't like it was around the corner. Yeah. It was an hour and a half drive, yeah. like on a Thursday night, matches and things like that. So it was, it, it was yeah, it was a bit of a gamble, but... But when I got there and I just like felt, you know, the smell of the match day and things like that, it was like infectious. Do you know what I mean? It was just like... Deep eat. Yeah, just everything and stuff like that. Because even before I had deep in Rangers, like I didn't used to take a shower or anything like that. I, I was I was so naive in the men's game. And like, I was like, well, there's men walking around here naked. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you do? I was like, I'm not getting... Like, so you go home with muddy knees and stuff like that. So no, I'm having a bath at home. Just weird, do you know what I mean? I've never sort of acclimatised myself into men's football, even at that stage at the Neaton Borough. So I remember thinking, right, what do I do here? Okay, first game, I'm thinking, fuck it. Fucking everything off, get in the shower. I thought, you know what I mean? Just things like that. Straight away, I was like, I need to, you know what I mean? Climatise myself yeah. to, to sort of what might, might, might sort of develop on from there. And I think it was the first 12 games, I'd scored 10 goals, which at that level... You know, young kid, 19. There wasn't many sort of young kids around. Good central location. Nuneaton, the, the press of Nuneaton really, they're two local newspapers that used to write the headlines and the reports and things. And it was just like, from that moment on to the start of that season, that's where, really where the fairy tale began. Did you, were you actually thinking, do you know what? I can kick on again from here. Because you, you're obviously yeah. so enthusiastic. Yeah. I mean, it comes across now that you were so enthusiastic yeah. about where you was. Yeah. But were you thinking, do you know what? I'm... I'm I, if I carry on like this, I'm going to yeah, be Yeah, definitely, definitely. Pro because, footballer. Because when you say like how enthusiastic and how quickly it went, the year, so rewind back a year when I'm playing for, for Deep in Rangers, I was a bit disillusioned with football at that time. I was, I couldn't really get into the first team at Deep and I was in the reserve team and I was earning decent money as we spoke, decent money at the <laughs> supermarket. And I loved Manchester United. Like, like honestly, like it was just... From, from the age of sort of six or seven, when my dad bought me the first Man United kit, it was my dream to play for Man Manchester <laughs> United. So, <clears throat> you know, my bedroom, everything was was all about Man U. So <clears throat> when I was getting a bit of dis disillusion from football, I remember opening the Stamford Mercury one day towards the back, the classified ads. It was Manchester United Supporters Club, um, bus leaves from the Danish Invader in Stamford. Um, Anybody would like to, to to be part of the match day squad, you can join the United Club and come and um, basically the bus took you to Old Trafford every weekend. I remember going to my dad and I went, Dad, I've not been to Old Trafford before and you know how much I love Man U. I think I want to join this and and go to the matches every every weekend, be part of this. I'm earning decent money and, and things and, you know, I can, I'm still living at home. He went, don't do it. Don't do it, son. Honestly, don't do it. Stick to your football. And I say, like, I've never, I always my dad to thank for that because I was very close to not jacking football in. I would have still played it, but this was only a year ago. So you can imagine, fast forward a year, and my dad's fucking loving it. You know what I mean? Oh, my, I've made the decision for my son not to do that. And so you're just going to travel up every home game and yeah, watch the game. It was like, what really at that stage of my life, like being a football fan, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to watch football. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to be part of that feeling about being associated with a club, loving a football club and being part of that camaraderie of that. I ended up experiencing that as a footballer, not as a fan, which is weird mm, in some yeah. respects because I never experienced that growing up as a child coming from where I did in Stamford in Lincolnshire because there was no real big clubs and I didn't watch football. Even though I was a big football fan, it wasn't the adrenaline rush of going to watch matches wasn't there. So sort of fast forward in that a year later when like suddenly Brendan come in, sheet of paper like that. He said, right, sit down, son. Okay, yeah. Do you want me to tell you who's come to watch you today? It's like, yeah. Arsenal, Tottenham, Leicester, Coventry, Man U. Fucking hell. You think? Wow. Were you glad that he did that then? Or yeah. Oh yeah. You think did that you pick you up? Because that could, I think we've heard no. from other lads, haven't yeah. we? If they knew the risk of the there, it said they'd be trying too hard or... Well, you... I, I probably you've got a flavour of where I've come from a little bit from my earlier childhood life and things. To hear that, oh my God, I was going out there and I was going to score. 
hundred percent. I was not not going to go out there and not score. It's so inspired, and he knew that. Brendan knew that with me that that he could tell me that. Massively inspiring to 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 sort of do that, and you know, I never sort of was playing a match and looking up to the stand and thinking, oh, I wonder if he's a scout and that. I just like I was so focused on football and and trying to score. So after how long is this? And it's obviously yeah. good ten in twelve games. Yeah. After how long is he saying the scouts here? Probably after match six or seven games. It's, it's mad when you think. Like I'd played like at the start of a season. I only played like twelve games. Do you know what I mean? When you think Nuneaton Borough was such a big part of my story, it was such a short part of my story as well. Mm. I was only there the April and May. Did the pre-season. I was there August, September, and I signed for Derby in the October. <laughs> it's mental. Do you know what I mean? It's just got like gone from from there and like. And then, then I, like agents, football agents appeared. Like me and me, it was it was me and me dad. It was me and me dad. Well, we've already established he's a good negotiator. <laughs> yeah. So so suddenly it went from football scouts to then after the matches, football agents. Like people were, were trying to talk to me dad. And then we had this one guy who introduced himself. His name was name was David Robinson. Introduced himself. I am a football scout. I, I can get you a move into the football league. And my dad was like, oh, how, how can you do that? Well, I can, I've got, I know this, 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 and this. And anyway, my dad did some research on him and he, he was, he was part-time agent, part-time stuntman. He went on Google, he went on Google and like he him. found him. His, name, his stunt name was David Glider. <laughs> And he'd done, he'd been the stuntman in like Coronation Street. So whenever they'd done any... Um, it's not Mission Impossible, is it? No. It's whenever they'd done any sort of... Like, you know, I'm rambling on the so, track. Like, this is so, <laughs> honestly, when you look back, you think, God, where I ended up, like, a few, you know, even 18 months later. So we had this bloke and he, 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 we ended up meeting him in, in, um, in a McDonald's service station, McDonald's. That's where he was going to talk to us and do his sales pitch as such of how and he was like uh, you know sign with me so you know one of these so, and me and my dad were like well, fucking hell what do we do we sign with him or not like and we just we, we kind of just some you know what i mean as i've explained that was like us part-time it he weren't like he'd got like david beckham his move to man U or it wasn't like one of them was it so just it was zip his hand in yeah, yeah it was like and he was wanting <laughs> me to sign and like my dad was like no no well, you know honestly stalked us <laughs> me he got off obviously in them days you, your name was in the like phone book wasn't it so like the phone would be ringing constantly and be like it's him again it's him again it's him again <laughs> so it, my mum said it once he's just gonna have to uh, Bill you're gonna have to answer the phone you're gonna have to answer it so he spoke <laughs> he spoke to him on the phone he, I think he was on the phone to him for like three hours couldn't not you know we were trying to drop a shoulder on this bloke we couldn't not get rid of him and then he's turned up at the doorstep found our address somehow fucking knock at the door like me Look, and my dad had to just tell him, so please leave us alone, leave us alone. Like let, let us, like we've, we've got this far pretty much on our own, yeah. you know, let us kind of make that next step forward. So Do you remember you know, the day you found out that there's been an offer for you? Yeah, I was, re I was reading it in the newspapers, but what the club did, they were really clever. Um, Brendan knew somebody at Tottenham Hotspur. So he got me a trial at Tottenham Hotspur. It was just me going along training just so he raised my profile. Oh. Clever what he did. So all the press were like, Malcolm Chris is on trial at Tottenham Hotspur. Basically, he just rang his mate at Tottenham and just got me training with a load of youth team players. Oh. <laughs> right? So I went along there proper. I was out of my fucking debt there a bit. I was staying in hotels in London. I was getting picked up by a guy, a goalkeeper called Alan Marriott. He was a goalkeeper, young Tottenham goal. He's picking me up from the hotel. And I was like, I'd never done anything like this. I'd never been really been away from home. Do you know what I mean? So then uh, they dropped me in a, in a hotel and I was going in and just, just training with these young lads at Tottenham. Went there for three days, come back, fucking all over the press. Malcolm's on trial at Tottenham Hotspur. You know, I was like, oh yes, I'm fucking trying on Tottenham Hotspur here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so again, straight away, that sort of it created a little bit of, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's clever, isn't it? Yeah. Clever yeah. from bit. him. So again, exactly the same. Knew somebody at Leicester City. But the difference at Leicester was that, like, we're at Tottenham, it was just a bit of a, you know, raise your profile a bit. T uh, Leicester were actively looking to sign me. Every Where were player. Leicester at the time? They were Premier League. Right. Uh, Martin O'Neill was a manager. Remember, Ian Marshall was a centre forward. So it must, yeah, it was around that sort of Heskey. So I was training with their first team players and I, I played in a reserve match at Filbert Street against Sunderland. Um, we won 1 0 and I scored the only goal. 
And I was like, fuck But they couldn't up. contain you, could you? I mean, you're talking about walking out at <laughs> Nuneaton and you're walking out at Filbert Street. Filbert Street, yeah. Fucking... Like, I, you know, playing in a Premier League stadium and like scoring the winning goal in it as well. And I remember I played really well as well. I think thinking, fucking done it. Done it. There you go. I remember, I think, oh, you know. Signing for Leicester tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. I thought, I've done so well with Nuneaton. I've trained really well. I've played a match. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Wow. I, said, I remember feeling so... Oh, so excited after that Leicester City match. Martin O'Neill came in to change room afterwards. Fucking Martin O'Neill, <gasps> Premier League manager. <laughs> wow. He said, I'd like a word with your son. <sighs> Fucking <laughs> pulled me in the, the um, back office. Um, just started straight. He said, well done, well done. I was like, thanks. He said, um, thought you played well. Thought you took your goal well. He said, we'd like another look at you. It's like, oh, honestly, like, I know I probably at the time should be thinking, you know, I felt like straight away the life drained out of me. I was like, bloody hell, what do you have to do here? Like, <laughs> like I know that probably looking back now, like I maybe just maybe a lot got a little bit carried away because I was riding such a crest yeah. of a wave and like, of course there was no give me that they were going to sign me. There on the do you team. know what I mean? Exactly. So maybe I was just like, maybe got a little bit ahead of myself there. And I was like, I came away from that experience and my dad said, it'll happen for you, son. Honestly, just, it will happen for you. And um, Derby County ended up ringing me. I think it was a couple of days later. They had a reserve match against Boston United at Boston. Played against Boston United. I played crap. I played shit. I couldn't. I couldn't I was trap a bag of sand to be honest. Didn't score. Didn't play particularly well. My dad rang me the next day. Um, said Brendan's been on the phone. Yeah, Derby County want to sign you. Are you joking? Yeah, no. They want. They want to sign you. They want to sign you. So this was the day after the, the, the reserve game I've played. Me, sleep, I had a bit of a sleepless night because it was like... That's uh, a chance. You're thinking that's a chance yeah, gone. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was, that was my chance gone. And luckily it turned out that they'd sent scouts pretty much the whole of the way through the season there. So it wasn't like they were just judging me on that one match, that one performance. They might have saw something. It happened and like I never, ever, ever looked back from that moment to then you know, going over to Pride Park and signing for Derby the, the next day. Did they, did they pay money for you? They paid 55 grand up front, which was dropping the ocean for a Premier League team. I think they just sold Christian Daly uh, to Blackburn Rovers, I think, for like 5.75 million, I think, a month before. So, you know, I'm sure they had a little no bit risk, of... Really, but to Neaton, I imagine 55 grand yeah. is a hell of a lot of money. A lot of money. Probably pays for the season, maybe. Yeah. A huge amount of money for Nuneaton. And there was there was other things tied in there. So if I played, if I played, made my Premier League debut, another 25 grand. Um, I've played another certain amount of games, another 25 grand. So I think all in all, there was potential there for about 130 grand for Nuneaton, which as you said, for a non-league club and for somebody that they'd paid, I don't know how many quid they'd paid me up until that point, a few thousand pounds, was, was a dream come true yeah. for them. So for me to then, you know, go over to, Pride Park and like go in the offices there. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was like it was it was all a whirlwind. Did you dad, your urgent again? Well, no, but by that by that time we were using we were on like advice from someone. We, we not the stunt man. No, <laughs> it was an ex-player. It was an ex-player. There's a story here, right? So this ex-player, I can't mention names because there was there was something that happened a few years later that. That, Tell us after. That, uh, <laughs> that I'll talk to you after. So we were, we were using this, this ex-footballer as a consultant for the deal. So we get to Pride Park, get in the offices, meet Keith Loring, Derby chief executive and uh, Keith uh, Pickering as well. He was the, uh, the secretary. So we go in the office and before we went in there, agent goes, right, if I shut my briefcase and walk out, you follow me. Right, okay. Have we got an understanding that that's happening? I was like, yeah, of course, absolutely. We'll, we'll do that. Me and my dad like, fucking, fucking no. <laughs> like, we, must, we, must we, we, we were doing the negotiation in the fucking pub like uh, a few months ago, weren't we, for the Neaton Borough. So he must know what he's doing because he's been an ex-player. <laughs> right, that's what we do. Anyway, got in there. So bang, contract gets put down. He looks at it. Right, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Fucking puts it to one side. Fucking briefcase goes down. Oh, no. Not, not first offer. No, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Briefcase goes down. I look at me down. I think, fuck, we're leaving here. So <laughs> up he goes. 
<laughs> and off out he goes. That's the signal. <laughs> so, so me and my dad were like looking at each other. Bear in mind, I'd seen what it said, as in money and length of contract. I'd seen it because it was he was sat in front of me, and I was like looking. I was thinking, licking my lips, going, "Oh, <laughs> right, this is all right." So it took, it was eight hundred pound a week, and it was thirty five grand signing on fee, and thirty five grand loyalty bonus if I was there at the end of the season. I can just imagine your stomach dropping. Is, is his anger? Oh. He's going to shut the brief kiss. Oh, oh. I, saw oh. that. I, I remember looking at the number. I looked at the numbers and I'm like, "Fucking, where's the pen?" I was like, "Where's the fucking pen?" <laughs> but instead of that, we were out. <laughs> We'd walked, we'd walked out and me and my dad were like... So did you get up and walk out then? Yeah, we walked out. Me, me and my dad and my agent, it wasn't really my agent. I was like consulting for us. Anyway, we and my dad went, what are we doing? He, he, went, he went, it's nowhere near enough. He said, and my and, and dad went, well, what are you looking for then? He went, no idea, but, but that... That's, <laughs> he, went, he, went, he went, no idea, but more than that. <laughs> he, went, he went, don't worry, they'll be in touch. So you've actually left the... You left yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd left the offices at the time. The, the, the chief executive and the secretary, they couldn't fucking believe it. No like, buys? Did you say buy or anything? Or not really, not really. Following? We were out. <laughs> we were out. Before we were in, we were out. Honestly, it was, it was, I wish we'd have filmed it. It was like comical. <laughs> so we got out and my dad was like, well, that didn't, that didn't kind of feel right. So he said, they'll be in touch. Well, like, I was desperate at the time to be a footballer. Do you know what I mean? If it had said, I'm probably doing it for free. I'd probably assigned it. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If, if that if it meant that I was going to be a professional footballer, so so basically it's worth pretty much hundred and ten grand a year, then, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you, you sign on for your bonus. It's hundred and ten grand. So you're on two, just over two grand a week, really. Went from non-eating yeah. to a Premier League hundred, football. Hundred and thirty-five yeah. quid, and it was a three-year contract as well. Three-year contract, and we'd walked away from that. And I remember thinking, "Fuck, this ain't right." And my dad went. Uh, and the and the agent ended up dropping us back off where we'd meet, met him. We met him at a, at a service station just off the M1. We met him, we dropped off and he drove off. He said, don't when they get back in touch, I'll ring you, the agent. Anyway, so my dad rang Brendan, the manager, and Brendan already know, knew what happened because the agent had rang him and he was like, "What? You, what's got, right, stay there, stay there. I was like, right, okay, um, I'm coming over. Obviously, it was a Leicester service station. Brendan was from the Leicester area. And Brendan said, I've rang the club. We're going back. I'm <laughs> going back. Yeah, stay in your car. Stay there. Stay there. So Brendan drove over. We got in his car. We drove to Pride Park. We got in the office. He said, let's have a look at that contract. Yep. You happy with that? Yep. Happy with that? Yep. Okay. Signed. Boom. Signed. So you signed the original contract that they'd show you first? Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not going to negotiate. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I... I'd played 12 games in the Doc Martens Premier Division. I was playing for my son, my brother's fruit and veg company a few months earlier. I was, that was fine. That yeah. was fine. I, I know it were fine, but you, obviously they have gone in as low as they can. You might be able to, you might have been able to get a little bit more. I wasn't from bothered at the time. To the Premier I, was, I wasn't bothered. Year old. I wasn't, at the time, Parky, I was, it wasn't, it was, that it wasn't about the money. Yeah. Fair, uh, yeah, it, get, was, it, was, it was for my agent that was there. And now, I, like I say, I don't know. What, what, was he th what was he thinking? I mean, what was he thinking? He was thinking, right, Premier League, going into the Premier League striker. What was he thinking? Money was good at the time. Yeah. yeah, it was decent money at the time. I don't know what he was thinking. Was he thinking three or four grand? I don't know. I've no idea what he was thinking. He, he obviously saw it was less than a grand and thought, not interested in that. Yeah. So, but for me, you know, it was a lot of money. Like so your, your priorities, well. your priorities yeah. aren't the contract. Are no, they were. They were. It wasn't. It wasn't. It Premier wasn't League. about. It wasn't about the contract. It was about. <laughs> Which, it by was the about, way, it's actually a really good contract. In what year was this? Nineteen ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. So you're on hundred, two hundred, two grand a week at, in ninety-eight at nineteen, yeah. effectively. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they did. So after we signed it, he said, "Look, you know." This is the contract. This is the contract that we offer. All the, the the what we see as you as is a reserve player. I wasn't taken aback by that. I wasn't expected to go in there as a first team player. And it was also something for me. There was a bit of security there as well. It's three years. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't going in there with a year and thinking, oh, I hope they don't find me out within a year yeah. and I'm still, I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> so for me, that was that was incredible that I was like doing that. And like Brendan did so much for me. He he was. He was the one that created everything. He got the contacts in there and he got the deal done as well. It sounds like the way the agent's gone about it 
would have gotten their backs up, the club secretary, the chief exec and stuff. You know, the way that's he's just- That's why we went, have to do it. That's why, we, that, that's why Brendan knew straight away, we had to get back there. Yeah. We've got to get yeah. back there. You know, we can't leave it because, you know, well, hang on, he's, uh, he's a bit of an arsehole. Yeah. You know I mean? None of that. I don't know, they must've thought me and my dad were like proper fucking arseholes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? The way that we got up, it was, you know, they weren't to know that it was all fucking flat. Yeah, just, uh, just no, no by, just uh, yeah. none of the air. <laughs> In unison, as the as the briefcase. <laughs> I remember mean, I mean, I mean, driving away from from dri driving away from Pipe Park and seeing it in my rear view mirror as we're driving around, thinking, "Oh no, what, like, what am I doing? Hey, what man, am I doing?" Geez. Do you know what I mean? It's like crazy that, when that, you think back. That goes again to agents. Just been a lot of them. Just been assholes. I don't know. You know, even if we'd have stuck with him, you know, I might have gone back the next day and I might have been signing a five grand a week. I don't yeah. know. But, <laughs> but there was there was no way that when Brendan found Risk. out what went on we've got this is a dream move for everyone yeah. concerned you know my family me brendan you know to have the exposure for him to get a player into the premier league you know for derby as well it was a good and it was a good story as well do you know what i mean it was a good it was a good story when i got in and everyone was like oh do you know what i mean it's that's a nice story isn't it like guy came from a supermarket and this that and the other and it was just it was nice refreshing so what were your like your first week as a professional mm. footballer because pressing football is a fucking weird bunch. Yeah. Well, you, you, it must have been like a rabbit head headlights thinking, what the fuck are these people here? Weird, yeah. I mean, I turned up in my... My dad was still driving me, obviously, at the time. Didn't... I I had a C-Reg um, Ford Fiesta, um, which was about 17 years old. <laughs> manual. Um, <laughs> my dad had a G-Reg champagne gold ford sierra estate that was an automatic so it's better to drive <laughs> but that was 10 years old as well that was 10 years old in 98 so champagne gold i'll never forget it it's like automatic because gold. because I, I did so many so many trips i, I drove over to nuneaton, nuneaton and i remember thinking oh it's mint because it was quick Do you know what i mean i was used to driving my fiesta and i drove this this sierra and, oh god this is this is proper luxury this automatic <laughs> as well and um we turned up in the training ground in, that, in my dad's car. And again, naive, just thinking, and I remember driving in, I think, oh, some nice cars in here, aren't there? D Dad, shall I sort of get, right, park, park over here. <laughs> <laughs> don't put next to that machine. Don't, don't, don't park, don't, don't go too far down. Just right, come in, <laughs> do a left turn now and I'll get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so like, he used to wait for me at the end of the, the car. Cause I didn't have a seat. Like I was like, oh, bring me in the, and, and again, like what, what, what football, what do you wear? Foot what do you wear as a footballer? <laughs> right. And I was like, thinking suit. No, track, uh, track suit. Yeah, that is, footballers wear track suits, don't they? Do you <laughs> know what I mean? I thought, right. So I bought myself an Umbro track suit, Umbro wash bag. I had a Nike track suit and I had a Kappa track suit as well. You know, the Kappa, yeah. we had the, yeah. I had a blue, like Not electric blue pants. one. They weren't poppers, were they? No, no. <laughs> they so I had, I had like three track suits and I remember turning up and like, oh, fucking no one wears track suits everyone's like dressed like they're going out to dinner you know right, right, really smart and like was like, why are people dressing like that don't, don't, footballers wear track suits don't they <laughs> and i just you know it was just things like that yeah a little bit of naivety of me and uh, to be honest i wore a track suit for about the first two years that i was there i went in and i didn't I, I was i found it really hard to change like to sort of mold from this young naive kid who went in there i was like not used to a real proper football dressing room, the banter and everything like that. And I was like year, light years behind with all that. I was going to say, how did you get there? on with that? Because it's ruthless. It's the ruthless. Yeah, it, like, my, like my mum and dad like brought me, you know, to respect everybody. And like, I remember like being in the chest changing room and like someone like had a go, I was like, you can't say that. I was in my head. <laughs> like, I, wasn't, I wasn't out loud. I was like, you can't say that. And I was thinking, Oh, it must be feeling, oh, poor lad. <laughs> like, you can't, and he said it again. I'm like, oh, well, like, they're not going to start on me now, are they? You think you were getting bullied? I don't know. Well, it was just like, it was ban it's banter, isn't it? But like, and I was thinking, oh, I don't want, I don't want it to be me. Because what am I going to say back? I can't have a go at them. <laughs> so you're like almost going, like, I, I felt myself very quickly. And it was hard, it's hard to sort of talk uh, uh, kind of about that. I kind of felt myself getting in a little bit of a shell straight away with that because I didn't really want people to like, cause you go in and you know what the banter's like in the dressing room, you know, you'd have stuff hung up, you'd have, you know, your socks cut out and stuff like that or trainers hung up. And I was like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want 
be that player. I, I just want to stay quiet in my corner and stuff. And oh, if someone's having, well, let's mind. have a little bit of a laugh. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I was thinking, oh, you know, you know, I want to put my <laughs> arm around you because you're like, do you know what I mean? So it was like it was it was straight away from sort of day one. It was it was a weird transition. I found that really really hard. Because I wasn't in a football environment ever growing yeah, up. Yeah, I, I think if you if you join as a, a YT or whatever, you you sort of learn how it is as you your YTs. All we your, your pals at the same age. It's literally just when you frost the front in, yeah, dairy aisle straight into the dressing. Room. Yeah, I'd have, been, I'd have been fetching milk at cartons in and that and putting them yeah. on your pegs and stuff like that. <laughs> it, it was, and like you know what I mean, and and I, but in the same respects, for me to be sitting alongside. I was awestruck as well. You know what I mean? I was like, I remember the first ever training session we did, we did some, used to do patterns of play at the baseball ground. Are you training with the first team straight yeah, away? Yeah, straight away. Mm -hmm. So I was like, boom. It wasn't like trying to find your feet. It was straight away. I remember the first training session I ever did was on a Thursday. We did the patterns of play for the Saturday match and I got paired up front with Paolo One Shop. <laughs> Fucking hell, I'm up front with one shop here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, oh, yeah. And I, I never forget it as well. Because by that, at that stage as well, I was kind of fearless as well, a little bit with my football. Like I try stuff. Like maybe that got kicked out of me a little bit when I got proper professionally trained because you've got to do this. We've got to hold the ball up, haven't you? Yeah. Oh no, you can't, you can't do that. Oh no, you're not allowed to do that. You know, no, that, that's how you do it. But I remember the first training session, the ball dropped and I, I did a Rabona through to pa put my Paolo one shot through clean one on one did a Rabona <laughs> I don't remember he come over to me and give me a high five I thought fucking made it here I might, I, might, I might be up front for Saturday do you know what I mean it was just like it was, it was strange because like one shop for me he was like a bit of a derby hero wasn't he and and he, he was a little bit hero for me because one shop was it the season before 97 he announced himself at Old Trafford didn't he like, I was I was a big Man U yeah, fan, yeah. so to see One Chop score that goal at Old Trafford when he dribbled through, through put it everybody. past, yeah, he went through everybody, didn't he? And he right-footed it in the corner past Schmeichel in the Stretford end. Do you know what I mean? I was always a little bit envious, and I was like, I'm playing with the man who who scored at Old Trafford. Do you know what I mean? It was just like it's proper. I was proper green at the time. I was just so happy that I was playing well, when, and training. Did you have many conversations with Jim Smith? No, not really. Not even not when I saw. I didn't meet Jim. I met him like on the training pitch, as such. Um, he came in when I played in practice match. He came in the dressing room afterwards. So he was there watching that, um, but didn't really, I've never really had a conversation with Jim wasn't one. He wasn't that mm. sort of manager and I didn't need that. I didn't really need that. I think he just let me get on with it a little bit. Um, he kind of developed into more of a father figure for me when I got into the first team as such, but did never feel the need to, to have conversations with me. When he did, it was just a bollocking basically. <laughs> It was. Cheers, Jim. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can, you know, count a few times where he, you know, he's called me in his office and like straight away, Malcolm can I have a word. Fucking hell, his heart beats like that because he was everyone fucking scared of him. I mean, I can clock that straight away at the club. So you'd be training, and the training session would be going really, really well, zippy, you no know, passing, right? and then all of a sudden people will start fucking falling over the ball or giving it away. I say, yeah, fucking, what's going on here? I look round and think, fucking Jim's coming over. Everyone shit themselves. Honestly, the training standard. Everyone like tried too hard because he was like a cluffy. Even the experienced yeah. lads. Yeah, I've seen players crumble in training because Jim stood on the sideline. Yeah, honestly, he would fucking crucify you. He would proper crucify you. Well, how did you feel after your first booking? Um, that I didn't want another one. And I, I think that's how he, how he managed. That if you got one, like, no way am I getting another one. Yeah. What we like, you know, obviously really enthusiastic about football and mm. so you know when you're on the coach long coach trip are you like talk asking players questions about football you know no, like, i was the opposite but you were quite quiet yeah not like you know like you could have been a oh tell us about that tell us about no you know. i was very quiet very introverted it's, it's if strange because any... there's kind of a contradiction there in the of how you behave within the social environment and but then when you got on on the field yeah did you just play without fear? Because I imagine, you know, we talked about the piss taking and everything. If you'd have done that Rabona mm. and, and cocked it up, I imagine you're getting a load of stick yeah. for that as well, but you're disassociating the... Yeah, there was two... The, I ended up with two parts. Like, yeah, I ended up, there was like two sides of me. And and like I say, if you, if you speak to anybody who, who knew me from, from then, they'd say I'm oh, very introverted, very quiet, didn't really say a lot and things. And I, what, I look back, I think that wasn't really me. 
And I just wish, wish if I could change anything about myself in that time was just to be myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just to be, just, and if, do you know what I mean? If I got the piss taken out of me, yeah. it doesn't matter. Not mm. worry how football is No, behave, just no, behave. No, like yourself. And, that, and, and that's hard for me to say because that affected me for a number of years. That's easier said than done. It is, it is, it is, absolutely. And because I never was myself. And that's how, you know, I never, never was myself really when I look back. I think you made a good point though. It sounds like you didn't take that on the pitch with you though. Yeah. You kind of... No, that, I say... Could be I yourself. I think if if I had have done that, I just wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made the person that I was and the player that I ended up becoming. But football for me was just that release. I loved when we got on the pitch and you could... Yeah, you'd have a bit of a laugh and a bit. And I just struggled to connect off the pitch because I just didn't feel... I know this, you know, you look back and there's something called you know, imposter syndrome, really, when you sort of, you're not kind of belo feel like you're belonging. And I think because things happened for me quite quickly and so fast that I never mentally adjust. Physically, I could, no problem. You asked me to run there. You asked me to do a chronic and finishing session, pass a book, could do all that. But the, the mentality of being a footballer and stuff, like I struggled with. I think I can't have this like go on for for the rest of my career. And then I, le I left Derby County with Chris Riggett. We went together. And that played into my fucking mind straight away. Fuck me. I've, got, I've gone with another player here. Do you know what I mean? If I'd gone on my own. Who, yeah. knows, what, who knows what I'm like? Yeah. I mean. oh, honestly, it really did eat away inside of me. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to be... I could, and I've been so many, like, few years, like, a bit introverted and stuff. And like, oh, wish I could just be myself. And I went with Chris and like, oh, for fuck's sake. I you know still I mean? have to wear tracksuits. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> the tracksuits had gone Gap by that yeah. point. But yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was, it was, it was, it was difficult. And that side of, of, of things... Like, especially, you know, I'm sure as we'll get on to, when suddenly I was injured, yeah. compound that with the way I was feeling inside about being a little bit isolated, a little bit not myself and not being able to, to be myself, suddenly, bang, layer the injury on top of that. Whew. Fucking hell, that's hard. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Like, I imagine moving clubs is an opportunity to not reinvent yourself, but if bits that you're unhappy with, you can get rid of it. It's a, it's a, fresh, it's a clean slate, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. So, uh, do you know, at, at Derby then, are you, are you, is it at the point where you're driving in thinking, you know, you know no, that, that hour, 45 minutes, hour from getting in, so when you get on the train ground, you're thinking, oh, fuck me, I, I'm, I'm dreading that. I, I got to that stage at Middlesbrough. It was, it was at Middlesbrough when I, when, I, when I was feeling like that. At Derby, it was like, like, let's get out of the changing room as, as quick as I can. To be honest, I was happy going in. I was happy doing what I was doing, but didn't really like to spend much time in the changing rooms. Yeah. Because I just didn't like some of the things that were said. And Happy when you're on the grass. Yeah, absolutely. So like, again, keep myself to myself. It was only really when like I joined Middlesbrough and then it wasn't just, you know, the moving of clubs, but the, it was just the enormity of, 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 of a move. Because I was kind of moving from, moving into Derby, was like, no, there was no expectations. It was, there was nothing, you know, I could, I could do that. And whether I became a footballer or not was, was irrelevant really. No one, you know, no one was really expecting anything of me. Suddenly I was moving to Middlesbrough when there was fucking hell, there was expectation there. Yeah. 20 goals a season, this is what, signing this guy. And that affected me as well. The expectation and re the realization that, that I needed to perform instantly. No settling in, no bedding in that played on my mind as well, big time. Because the reality of that move to Middlesbrough as well is sh that should have happened six months earlier and it didn't. And I spent six months agonizing over the move that eventually happened. And I wasn't ready in my mind mentally to deal with that move because I'd already made that move six months earlier. Yeah. So you obviously done really well at Derby. I need to speak about your debut. Yeah. So were you there three three months? Tra were you just training, playing the reserves, and then got yeah, your chance? I got my chance at Sheffield Wednesday. So I was in. I was like around the squad. It, it was funny as well because I ended up on the bench in the November. So I signed in the October. There was a depletion of the squad due to injury, and I found myself on the bench at Anfield. In the Premier League. In the Premier League, I could not bloody believe it. <laughs> I expected to go in there and maybe a year, eighteen months. You know, find my feet, just quite happy being there. Maybe even loaned out. 
being such yeah exactly young maybe lad. being loaned out and stuff but in the November there was that many injuries I was on the bench at Anfield 40 odd thousand fans at Anfield like oh my god wow wow and then anyway a few months later I ended up making my debut and I just remember thinking like I've done it I've I've done it I've played in the Premier League I'd never do you know what I mean I was like so as a kid that's really what was my dream to do and like I came off the bench at, at, at Hillsborough against Sheffield Wednesday and just, I was so happy. Like to, to, to play in the Premier League when I was such a big football fan, I'd seen nearly every goal and every game of the Premier League that ever existed. Do you know what I mean? Watched it all the way through. And for me just to know that I'd played in the Premier League was like incredible. Cernicek, Pavel Cernicek got sent off. So I was running through, got played through, not the ball past Cernicek. He came like... Kung, Kung Fu Karate kicked me, got sent off. So I was like, you know what I mean? It was like, not, I didn't score, but I'd sort of felt like, you know, you could watch Match of the yeah, Day yeah. back and like, I was there. <laughs> like, That's there. me, they're getting There's signed. Me. You know? Know I mean? <laughs> so, and then it went through a little bit of a in and out and stuff like that. And I just bided me time. And then obviously I, I made my name. My full debut was against Middlesbrough at the, the Riverside um, for Derby when we were struggling really at the time. We went there and we won we won 4-1 and I scored two goals on my, my full debut in the Prem. So it was fantastic. And you know what I mean? It was, it was everything that, you know, I'd worked at, you know, from being sort of six years of age, the dream to do that, to play. I mean, I'm, I never forget my mum and dad were in the crowd. I was just so, I was so pleased for my mum and dad, you know what I mean? That I could, you know, celebrate with them. My, my, my second goal that I scored, you know, it was in front of the Middlesbrough fans, uh, sorry, the, the the Derby fans. I saw my mum and dad when I was just like, I can't imagine, you know, being a dad my, myself, you yeah. know what I mean? The emotion that they must have been feeling. Mm. Knowing, knowing the journey that I'd been through to get to that stage, yeah. to do that and look down on their son. It's, I don't know, it's just weird, isn't it? It's dropped to my knees. I remember doing a bit of a knee slide, um, you know, and that, the reason why I did a knee slide is it took me back to, about a year before we went on a um, a trip to the Belfry. What's that? Uh, there's like a nightclub at the Belfry. Oh, I know what you mean. I was hoping you were going to know it. I can't <laughs> think of it. But there's a nightclub at the Belfry. So we went there for like a golfing trip with a club. Jim Smith and that went. I never forget. We all had a, a few drinks and, and pissed and stuff on the dance floor. And like I ended up doing a knee slide, for whatever stupid, knee slide across the dance floor. And I remember finishing my knee slide, looking up and fucking Jim Smith's looking down and me fucking shaking his head. <laughs> I didn't know he was there. <laughs> I didn't know it was busy packed nightclub. And I remember some of the lads going, oh, fucking knee slide, knee slide. So I just knee slid. Like I said, I just looked up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Did he shake his head? Yeah, he just like looked down, fucking beer glass, just like shook his head. And I was like, and, I, and then when I scored the first goal, it was quite funny because I ended up doing a knee slide. And that just sort of, yeah, it reminded me of that time when, uh, when I did it in front of Jim. But yeah, like I say, and then afterwards, like cameras wanted to, do you know what I mean? Speak, like yeah. interviews. Like the thing is, Steve Round, had done some media training with me and he used to hold mock interviews with us. So he said, right, you've played really well. You scored a couple of goals. I'll be the interviewer, camera there. And he'd interview us. So we'd, we'd sort of, you know, answer the questions. So I just remember thinking, I've fucking done this. <laughs> I've already done this. I've, I've, so out, out there, and I mean, obviously you look yourself back and you cringe, don't you? But <laughs> I, I, it was important for me to have that little bit of, of training the things so that when that moment come along, which it did, that I'd sort of felt a little bit more comfortable about it than, than I probably would have done if I'd have just been originally signed, gone in and, you know what I mean? It'd all been too much for me, really. Fair play to stay round. I've never heard coaches doing that. Yeah. Yeah, Top are you coaches. Serious? I think, I think the academies do it now, but do they? obviously back, back then. then. But you know, he's taken an interest in you, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, he, he did. And he like, he was, he was all into the mind as well. So round he would, later on when I got into the team, um, he, he come to me and he went, give us a couple of songs you like. I went, okay. So I gave him a couple of songs I liked at the time. Dance music, I think. I mean, I look back and think, oh, fucking hell, did I like that? <laughs> so I've still got the, uh, the and he, he produced a DVD for me, like of me goals, my, you know, bits of skill and things like that. Just to, you know what I mean? He said, go and watch that son at home. And I took it home and it was, oh, I was like, oh, fucking hell, wow. So you know, just to, just mm. to give me that, like, yeah. he said, what do you think? He said, oh, I went, Thank, thanks for doing that. Thank you. And he, he gave me a book as well. He signed in it, like about psychology, about winners and stuff like that. And like, I wouldn't, you know, there's people look in on your journey. You think that would I have achieved or what I have gone on to achieve? If I hadn't have had that person around me. And I definitely think that if I hadn't have had Steve round around me around that, that time at Derby, that I probably wouldn't have gone on to achieve, 
what I achieved at Derby County without him there. Mm. I'm thinking Darude, Sandstorm, Robin S, Show it Me was, Love, maybe? It was... Um, <laughs> that the era? I didn't know it was a space. <laughs> about space, so on, John. space, space brothers, <laughs> for, forgiven. It's a good one. You remember? No. Um, I'll send it to you later. Um, so yeah, so it was just you know that sort of little thing, that attention to detail, which you know when I reflect back now, because I'm sort of doing some football coaching myself, I think oh, you know what I mean. That's clever. Were there any of the players in that dressing room in them early days that, that took you under you took you under their wing? No, such? I was like I was just like not really. I was I was like relative. The lads in the dressing room would have thought I was yeah, a bit of a weirdo. Prob probably, probably, yeah. Like, oh, he's a bit quiet, or he's a bit like, oh, where did he? You know, what I mean, I, I come from nowhere. It wasn't like I had a reputation and things, and you know, you know what it's like if you if you sign in there as a, as a you know, I didn't really sign into Middlesbrough as a, like a marquee big signing, and I never felt I should have done. So we'll probably talk about later, but you know, I, there was there was no expectation of me, so I don't think that I wasn't, as you said there. You know, should I have been the one to go right? Just tell me about you know, pull one of the experienced players to one side. I was just sort of sitting back and just watching it. I was I was very absorbing. observant, yeah, absorbing stuff in and things like that, and you know, just trying to think how do how do people act? And you know, I remember the first so I signed in that October and the Christmas party, the first Christmas party that came oh. in that. December was to Dublin and it was organized like Daryl Powell had organized it, Igor Stimak had organized it and they wanted all the young kids to come and they were the, the first team players were going to pay for the young kids to come. Well, oh, that's nice. Anyway, so all right, okay. Oh, oh, we're flying over there. I'd never been in an airplane. I'd never, at the age of, what was it? Nine, I'd never flown an airplane before. So I remember turning up East Midlands Airport and there was one of these propeller players. Fucking hell, oh my God. The first flight, it was like this, like thing that was bouncing up and down, but I mean, it was—it's a bit of a blur that trip. But all, one thing I can remember, like Igor Stimak, down in shots of whiskey and smoking. I remember being so disappointed. How can a foot? How can a footballer smoke? <laughs> I remember. Ste I remember there was Stefan, Stefan Snore as well was in a, and he was smoking as well. And I was thinking. These players that are sort of held in such high esteem, You're how, still looking at it from how, a fan's perspective. In yeah, a way. probably. Yeah, I, I would say so. I was thinking, you can't, you can't smoke. Do you know what I mean? What, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, and yeah, it was just a bit of a, but again, it was that whole experience, wasn't it? Okay, just seeing footballers outside of a club environment and and like enjoying themselves and and letting the hair down and oh, how do you act when you're a bar? Do you, you know, what, what do you do? You know, so it was all like, it's like, it was just, I was trying to wing it a little bit to be perfectly honest with you and just trying to get through it the best way that I could. Weird. How long did the Sea Reg Escort Fiesta last? Not long. So the did, you, did you think, fuck it, I'm going to have a bit of a blowout? Well, the 35 there. grand drop, obviously dropped into me account. And then what was the first thing, obviously, that I needed was a car. So and a couple I'll, of tracksuits. I was like, yeah, tracksuits are sorted. I was living at home, so I didn't really want for anything. Um, so. Again, we were like, right, what, what do we, I can't go too extravagant, obviously, although I would have liked to, but I couldn't anyway, because it was like, it's not much really. I could have, yeah, you could have bought something nice, but it would have washed it all away. So uh, me and me dad, we drove over to Motor Point in Derby. I saw a Ford Puma, manual gray. Manual. <laughs> manual gray <laughs> Ford Puma. I think it was a 1.2 litre, 10 grand, Irish import, and I bought that. That was my first car that I bought myself. I, and I loved it. I, I, I thought I was king Those bollocks. Yeah. Do you know the first place where I went when I bought it? I went to Pride Park and I bought myself a Derby County car sticker. And I stuck it in the back window. Did you? Yeah. Why? Because I was so <laughs> proud that I was a footballer. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the fans love you. When you're pulling up. I, but then I turned. But then obviously I turned up in the in the in the car park, and I used, and I thought and I'm thinking, why has no one else got a car sticker in the, <laughs> in the fucking thick window? Why is it just me? <laughs> you, that's it. That, honestly, that was like, like for the rest of the lads. That's the last thing that you want in your car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. But I look it, back there and I'm like, oh my god. You'd like, have two what, was I, what was I thinking? Do you know what I mean? But I was so. 
Not long. Yeah. Not long. No, it was like, fuck, you need to get this out. Need to get this off. Think, it wouldn't fuck. Think... You know, it was one of them ones where you couldn't get the fucker off. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an easy peeler. So it was like, oh, but it I was just things. I you in your asshole. Yeah, I, know, I know. I know. But at the t- yeah, I think. I think they realised it was a bit green, so they like they kind of left me alone a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, things like that were just. Imagine being in the club shop. I'm, I'm sure I knew centre forward just been in for a derby count. <laughs> no, <laughs> might not be. It must look like him. But... No, well, they didn't. They didn't recognise me. They didn't recognise me in the club shop. So I'd gone in there with my mum, right? Because we, my mum, my mum and dad and me had been to buy the car from Motor Point. So then we went into the Derby County Club shop. When I signed, they said all players get 20% off purchases, <laughs> right? So obviously I said to my mum, I went, mum, I don't think they're going to recognise me here. So I don't really want to go and embarrass myself by going to the till and asking for 20% off. Would you do it for me, mum? So she went, right, okay. So you're still, so you're still wanting, you're 40, still wanting pen, 20% 40, off. 40 pence off this two pound <laughs> sticker? <laughs> no, but my mum and dad had baskets of stuff. That mum and dad bought everything, literally. Be- they were so proud. Do you know what I mean? For yeah. mum and dad, where I come from, not to suddenly they could go in a, like Nuneaton Borough had a shed. Like <laughs> deep in ranges, you couldn't buy any memory. Like suddenly I was a player and this is where my story is quite like, I don't know, it's like quite good in some respects that, that we were so green in all of that, that my mum and dad would go, you could buy the polo shirts with Derby County on it. Like I bought myself a replica shirt as well. Not at that visit. I bought myself, I wanted to feel like, <laughs> like, I don't know, I wore a Man United shirt all my life, right? So if I was going to suddenly be a player at another club, I had to have the shirt. I had to, and I had to wear the shirt and look down on it and feel like I was part of that, that team that I was watching on the telly, that I was still as a young, as, as a relative young person in football, I bought the shirt and I wore it at home. You wear it at, at home? At home, yeah. Yeah. No but, nights out? No nights out, no. No, I wore it underneath. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's the thing. That's And that's how, like, I just want people to understand, because obviously I've got my autobiography coming out. I just want people to understand, like, all the stuff that, that that was in and around that at that time, do you know what I mean? Falling, I fell in love with with my football club. Yeah. I disassociated myself with Manchester United in some respects, and I needed to fall in love, not just being a footballer, but falling in love with a football team because I was such a massive football fan. You don't, you, yeah, I know I mean, it's easy for me to say that. I know that every footballer is, but honestly, I was, and I so desperately wanted to fall in love with with my team. It's the it's, example, the, the example of the polar opposites of coming through the football academy and coming in as a fan. I, yeah, I, I think is yeah exactly. And to, for me to go in that club connection. shop and to see, you could buy. I mean, my mum bought like the the, the you know Rami, you know she bought a Rami to to take home and stuff. And my mum and dad bought the, uh, you know, this was the first season when I was on the team, fo- you know, the team yeah club picture. You could buy that at a club shop. My mum and dad had that as their main picture mm. above the fireplace. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, it was incredible. I just I imagine your mum in the full manager, the full manager court. Dad, to <laughs> I just think it's sad because I, I was like that at the start and then it soon just yeah. turned into a job. You know, we speak about it quite a lot where it's like, we're not really into football that much. I bet you wore fucking your Sunderland shirt out. But I was a Sunderland fan, wasn't I? So I was like that. But when you were saying it, I was thinking that I was a little bit like that. And then it just like that. It went, does. It goes. Yeah, it went with a click of a finger. Yeah. For, for as, for as like, you know, I think it always stayed for my parents, you know, seeing their son, you know, you know, go in the club shop and I'm modeling the kits or, uh, you know, I could, I was a poster or a card or whatever. For, it never kind of left my mum and dad. For me, obviously, yeah, you, you merge away from that. But then that's where I think in some respects, I, I lost, I lost a little bit of the identity of what made me. Mm. And you just sort of morph into that person that, that you're expected to be, that people exactly, look yeah. at you yeah. and want you to be. You know, I look back and we laugh at the way that I was when we do that, but yeah. that was me. Yeah. That was what I was and where I was at that point in my life. So at that point, you were being yourself. Y- yeah, yeah, possibly. And which, which a lot of the old old football teammates would be like, what a fucking little nerdy twat this is. Yeah. bastard. It's strange, isn't it? You just sort of morph to be somebody that, that people expect you to be. I think that's yeah. all I can say. And, you know, you, and along <laughs> with that, it becomes, you come fame as well. Do you know what I mean? And I was not, I'm from a small sleepy town in Stamford. You know what I mean? I'd, uh, it's, it's, it's a really difficult one because like in certain situations, you want to be recognized when you're famous. 
When you tell Nick a bird. When, you, when you're on a night out, yeah. yeah. And you, you know, you're in a, in a situation or whatever. Yeah, there's certain situations that, that you want a bit recognised. But no one, again, that book of how to be a footballer, how, how to deal with fame and things like that. You know, I the first time that, that it happened to me, I was in a shopping centre in Derby. So I was in my tracksuit. Just club tracksuit. No, my training tracksuit. So Zumbro tracksuit, and I re these lads recognise me. You know when you you know you know when someone clocks you. You know you get that little bit of a oh fuck you know or you, you kind of subconsciously know that someone recognises you. So I was in a shopping centre in Derby, and they were following us around. I'm like, what what do I do here? What am I, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to turn around? Am I supposed to say hello? And I turned a corner. I'm like, I need to drop my shoulder here, get away from them. And I went into Specsavers. <laughs> right so I dropped my shoulder went into Specsavers that new striker we got he's got a good right? and, and, I, and I started looking at these sunglasses and I started trying these sunglasses on and then because these lads were hanging about outside the security guard came and, and like sort of looked at these lads who were outside the thing and they were looking in at me and obviously as I put my sunglasses on I'm looking out at them like thinking, are they still there? Obviously, security guard thinks because they're all in tracksuits, they think <laughs> they think I'm with these lads. <laughs> so straight away, the security guard comes in and starts like, I knew, you know, again, when you can clock a security guard's fucking got his eyes on you. So he was ended up like clocking me. So I was, I was in that awkward situation of thinking, right, what do I do here? Do I leave the shop and he's going to follow me out, and then is he going to sort of pull me over, thinking that I'm in there? So I like, I sort of panicked, and he walked over towards me, and I and I went. Uh, th them lads are following us. <laughs> and, he, and he went, what do you mean? I said, uh, uh, th 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 they're following us. Because I, 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 I thought he was going to like fucking grab us. <laughs> so I sort of had to explain to him and he was like, oh, right, okay, I, I, I see, no problem. And I sort of like, like apologised why. I said, I shouldn't be in this shop, but hopefully you can understand. <laughs> I didn't want to. There was no reason for me to be in that shop. I dropped my shoulder. I dropped my shoulder in the nearest shop. Honestly, I'd sort of panicked, and that's the dealing with. Like, I didn't really know. You know, obviously, you look back. You think you should. Hi, lads. How you doing? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we like? Oh, can we get your autograph or whatever? I didn't know how to deal with it. Like, it was strange. And like I say, to be then sort of being in a situation where you're sort of a security guard thinks you're in there nicking something with a group of lads in a tracksuit. Like. Them tracksuits, they always dazzle you know the tracksuits. I mean? like, oh, but yeah, it's like that. Well, that's like a funny story of sort of, you know, things that come along and you're trying to adapt as best you can to, to sort of the newly found fame, I suppose, that, that I was sort of adapting to. A quick break, gentlemen, for a message from one of the sponsors for the episode. Get this, elitecompetitions.co.uk. Oh, straight down the lens because yeah, it's important. You nailed that, Chris. Roll up, roll up. Daily prizes to give away and these aren't just you know it's not like our Tom Bowler they're not one of the oh they're not one of the mill prizes these, oh, are, these are talking top, holidays talking watches Rolex watches not a Casio <laughs> do you know holidays homes houses bloody houses you can win and when you say cars McLarens BMWs the bollocks oh, take it, me money Chris I'll treat them. <laughs> <laughs> get a couple of tickets <laughs> all top Top ticket prizes they have, but top ticket prizes doesn't mean that it's top dollar tickets. Even though they start at ninety nine p to enter. I've always wanted to get involved in something like that. Yeah. Well, I know I know a, a guy who has won four cars in this this sort of. It's our four. Four cars, and about eighty grand in cash as well. Well, there's been over seven thousand winners to date with elite competitions, and over thirty million pounds worth of prizes have been given away. Live draws know. as well, aren't they? Live, you can watch them. Watch online. them. So that makes it a bit more yeah. exciting, doesn't it? So then, hit us with it. What's the offer? Oh, we've got an offer. We've always got an offer, and we all you've got to do is go to www.elitecompetitions.co.uk and use the code Cost Twenty Five. Get that twenty five percent off. And if you do join and you win anything, please do let us know. By the way. And I think I already know the answer to this from just how you've been, but somebody said, did you roll up a £50 note and burn it when you signed for Derby? What do you think? I've, I've just answered it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not in a million years. I mean, as well, when I it went... It a 20. Where, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I had a, no, I had a situation once when I went, because when I went, used to go back out, back at my hometown, you know, where I was born and raised, I'd had nights out there, 16, 17, 18, you know, nightclubs, getting pissed, whatever. Suddenly, when I was a footballer, 
like people, I felt like people were, yeah, there was, there was some parts of the, the you know, the, the lads that used to know you that, that oh my God, wow, you, you, congratulations. Please for you. But there was the other side of it where like people like wanted aggro. Yeah. Like for what? Like, and they even used to give it the big end or anything like that. I remember being in key old Kate's in a nightclub in Stamford and these two lads came up to me really aggressively. What's this about you burning 20 pound notes? Like what are you, like, <laughs> what are you on about? Like as if. Like, as I if I would ever do that. Do you know what I mean? And the, the thing, I don't know where these stories come from. Like, I have never in a million years ever, do, and would never, no. ever do anything like See, that. See, to them too, though, I think I'd have gone, they were 50s. <laughs> just in that, <laughs> just to piss I them ended off. Up. Do you yeah. know what I did? I ended up, I said, come on, lads. I said, come to the bar. I ended up buying them a drink. And just had a chat with them. And they went, do you know what? You're a decent lad, aren't you? You know, I had, you know, there's been occasions as well, like being a Derby player where, you know, I've, I've, and, not Nottingham. I don't know if anyone's been out for a night out in Nottingham. Yeah, good night out. Yeah, well, I, I had two nights out in Nottingham and lasted the grand total of about 45 minutes. Just because you were a Derby player? Yeah, uh, I, I got, I ended up the first bar that, so me and my mate went out and I kind of maybe knew that it probably wasn't a great idea for a Derby <laughs> County centre forward in the Premier League to go out in Nottingham, but... I'd always heard that Nottingham's a really, really good night out. And obviously I was at the time like a night out. And me and my mate said, right, let's go. So we concocted this story that if anyone spoke to us, that me mate was a Nottingham Forest player. Yeah. So he was like the security, like, and he was a Nottingham Forest player and, and I was his mate. So that would get us out of any trouble that we were going to get involved <laughs> in because then they did speak to, the, to speak to him because he played for Nottingham Forest. It was a load of bullshit, but we, we thought we'd come up with that idea. Anyway, the first bar we went into, I got a bit uneasy. I stood at the bar. This lad came over to me and it was quite loud noise. And he went, what the fuck are you doing here? I was like, oh, fuck. And I was just about to say, I'm here with me mate from Forest, right? And I saw his right hand. He cocked his right hand, right? And it fucking, and I like did a mate like, like it was almost in slow motion. Matrix. Ducked out the way, missed me. I, I, I felt the wind of his fist come past me. And this couple ended up, this couple were behind me, grabbed me by the shoulder, pulled me back. There was a fire exit here. Uh, it was all kind of almost orchestrated, like it was all meant to happen. Like, so he, he threw a punch at me, missed, got dragged back. The, the handle of the fire exit was pushed. I was pushed out. My mate followed me and we fucking legged it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking legged it. First drink in. First bar, first drink in. <laughs> straight in car, straight on. Well, yeah, we, well, we, got, we, got, we got a taxi and we ended up going back to Derby. And this was maybe half an hour. So that was, that was half an hour. Then the other, the other, <laughs> are you trying again? The other 15 minutes, right? So <laughs> Lee Morris, who lad played for Derby, Sheffield United, uh, a guy called Adam Murray. Uh, I think he's he's still around the scene now. Um, they decided it was, it was the three of us. So we said, oh, we'll go to Nottingham for a night. I went, lads, fucking not a good idea, this. What do you mean? I said, well, the last time I, a night out there, I lasted half an hour. First, pretty much the first bar we went in, I got, ah, oh, fucking hell. There's no chance of that happening again. I was like, well, bear in mind that, Obviously, it has happened. Anyway, so just, we, let's just we, we, pull in the, we pull at this bar. I think it was like a Weatherspoons or something. Um, and we ended up pulling up in the pub, got in, we sat in this booth, and I'm fucking there having a drink like this. I fucking look up. Fucking like this in the fucking booth. It's only the fucking lad that's thrown a fucking punch at me. <laughs> <laughs> The same lad, <laughs> the fucking same lad has walked in the bar. I mean, you couldn't fucking write it. It was the first bar we ended up as well. And I fucking ducked down, I went, and, and, and Lee went, what are you doing? I went, I said, you know, when I tell you about that fucking bar, he's just fucking walked in there. <laughs> he's like, you're joking. Anyway, we fucking hell. So obviously we didn't want, he was a big, biggish lad, do you know what I mean? I was not gonna, so me, um, Lee and Adam just got out the bar straight away. And we just said, look, we need to go home. Not a good idea. So I yeah. told you. So two nights out in Nottingham, to lasting a total of forty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe it. Honestly. <laughs> and I've never, I've never been out in Nottingham since, and I maybe don't intend to because obviously <laughs> Forest fans probably don't like me even to this day. <laughs> you need to speak about some of the players in that team, man. Mm. King Cladzi, Ravanelli, yeah. Carboni, West. West, yeah, mad. Terebo, West, yeah. man. When you think of God. You know, again, being that football fan, recognisable figures, world football, 
dreadlocks, you know, World Cup and stuff like that. And he ended up in our dressing room. I don't know how. Like he ended up, <laughs> what is it, Inter Milan, AC Milan, Derby County? <laughs> like, it's not the natural progression, no. is it? Totally, totally random. I remember him turning up. He turned up with a load of guys, you know, around which I tended to find like the guys that came over from Italy. I'd seem to have a lot of entourage. Same with Ravenelli. Ravenelli seemed to travel with, with quite a few people, agents and whatnot, interpreters. But Taribo was a strange one because he'd turn up with, you know, I, I, see, I turned up in my Umbro wash bag. He turned up with his Tesco carrier bag. He, he, honestly, he turned up, he used to turn up in a carrier bag with his, with his belongings in. I was thinking, fucking hell, you must have earned some serious money in the last couple of years. You're like one of the most famous, recognisable f- figures in world football. He, he would turn up with a plastic bag with his stuff in. <laughs> and his dress sense, oh my God. Obviously I've, I've criticised my own dress sense, but he would turn up in a tracksuit with shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like patent leather shoes on. And he, oh, do you know I what? Can't. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> so you know where, you know, they were going, oh my God, Tarebo, what are you doing? And he, he would just turn it, yeah, whatever. Put his bags down, get changed, out he went. I mean, I remember one time at Fulham, so League Cup game, we were in the Prem, Fulham were in the Championship. Uh, we turned up there, he, he didn't turn up. So what happened, what would happen is, Tarebo very rarely trained, so he played the match and he, he was a pastor at a local like church back in Italy. So he used to play his match and go home and preach on a Sunday. Would we see him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Don't know. Might turn up Thursday, might turn up Friday. <laughs> we hadn't seen him. So we play this night game at Craven Cottage with Cerebo. No one knows where he is. No one can get hold of him. Jim Smith's around there. Fucking, where is he? Fucking get on the phone. Nope. So, obviously he's in the team because he's, he's one of our bigger players. He's, well, where is he? Well, no one knows where he is. So they ended up, he turned up like with a minute to go before team submission. He hadn't, we, no one had seen him for a few days prior. And I don't know how on earth he ended up turning up. He turned up and what did he turn up in? He turned up with his fucking Derby County tracksuit on again and fucking shoes. <laughs> Walking in and again with his fucking bag. Like not caring the world, fucking Jim says, what the fuck? You know, you know what I mean? But, and then it goes that. So then we ended up doing the, the um, you know, like before you go out, you have the huddle. So Taribo's like, I want to huddle. Obviously he'd just come back from Italy where he'd done all his preaching. He was going to preach to us. So again, I've got nothing, you know, nothing against the church, anything like that. So there we were, Jim Smith in this huddle as well. Remember how old school Jim Smith is, mind? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so there we all are in, in the huddle. Taribo is in the middle preaching to us in a language that I don't know what, what, what it is. <laughs> is it Italian? Is it, is it his native language? But it's almost like a bit of a witch doctor kind of approach. <laughs> like, and, you know, and I looked over and Rory Delap was looking at Seth. And he was fucking gone. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. And then I'm looking at Jim and Jim's like proper shutting his eyes like he's fucking praying. Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking like, oh my fucking God, looking round here. And and yeah, he was preaching to us and, and things like that. And we obviously, we, we, we went out um, and obviously he was wanting us to, to, to win the game. Did you win the game? No, we fucking lost 3-2. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it fucking work, is it? <laughs> In all fairness, I'll give it to Taribo. Whenever he played, do you know what I mean? He gave his all, you know, the fans will remember him. You know what I mean? He didn't didn't like play. He wasn't awful or anything like that. He always played, he gave his all. But we just, you know, I kind of remember him for just being, he wasn't, he was there, but wasn't there as well. Yeah. You know, and that was kind of the flip opposite with like another big person, like Ravanelli, who was, who was there all the time and who was like one of the most professional people that I'd ever been around, which surprised me because I'd heard a lot about Rav when he was at Borough and, you know, the season that he'd had there. And I'd heard a lot about things and obviously seeing it from a, from a close in, being that football fan in me as well. This is Ravinelli who scored like Champions League final when I was working in the supermarket. And this is, he scored 30 odd goals for Borough. Do you know what I mean? It's like a dream. And then I was ended up playing centre forward with, with him as well. So it was just like, how was he with you? Because I think we've heard he was hard work as a lad to he get wasn't. on with. No, uh, I I enjoyed every moment with him. To be fair, and as that partnership, would he? Would you? Would yeah, he, he give me. you advice, yeah. help you. Yeah, he, first first day of training, came over to me. He didn't speak great English, but he brought first time he came and 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 brought he, 
uh, Stefano Aranio, who could, who was a fantastic player as well. He came over with Rav to me on the training pitch and he, what, he, he, uh, Iranio said, Ravanelli is here for you, to help you. I was like, fucking hell, hairs on the back of my neck stuck up, stood out. Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh my God. He said, yes, Malcolm, I'm here for you. <sighs> Bloody hell. That must have been like, yeah, yeah, special, yeah. So well, yeah, yeah, we, you know, we, you know, you could argue we played in a struggling team together. Do you know what I mean? We didn't really have the creative, yeah, we mentioned King Cladsey there. He set up most of my goals in all fairness, but we didn't really have from wide areas or King Cladsey was in and out the team. He wasn't really trusted to have it. It was almost like if we were putting King Cladsey in the team, we were going to get overrun in midfield because he didn't do the, the hard yards back. back. Um, and, but I really, really enjoyed And he, he, for me, playing with Ravenelli and seeing how he looked after his body, what he ate, he was he never missed a training session. He was worked so hard on the training pitch, off in matches. Like it gave me that understanding of right, okay, that's what a top player. That's how he carries himself, and that's that's the level. And the, I think why me and him didn't share that partnership was Ravenelli. And this isn't a bad thing about he was very selfish in terms of if it was his, if he was in and around the goal, he'd be shooting. He wouldn't be looking for me. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's not a bad thing. That's it, it got to where he got to and he scored all them amount of goals. So for me to forge a partnership, I was kind of that sort of play where I got on the end of things. I didn't create a lot for myself, but I was reliant on a bit of movement around me. Yeah, somebody slipping me in like King Cladsey would do. And But Ravinelli wasn't that type of player. So we didn't forge that that probably partnership where he would. He would make runs for himself where I'm thinking, well, why is he running that? Why is he not coming to me so I can spin off him mm. and things? And and I wasn't, it wasn't in our stages of a career where I was going to sell him, well, Rav, hang on a minute, you need to come here, mate. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was kind of in awe of him thinking, well, if he's moving there, then I'll kind of, everything was dovetailed. What he was doing, I was reacting off the back of rather yeah. than the other way around, which mm. which meant we didn't really forge the partnership, which maybe the Derby fans would have liked. Yeah. And you know, at this point, leading yeah. goal scorer with Ravinelli that season, have yeah. you been rewarded with a with a new contract in, in line with, with these big names that are coming in? Uh, yes and no. So yes, I was rewarded, but I probably signed my... The contract I signed at Derby was the same contract I left at Derby. So... When I got in the team, it was only natural where I had got like 18 months left on this contract. So, yeah. you know, the club were probably thinking, oh, he's in the first team now. Like played a couple of games, made me debut and they offered me this, this contract. And maybe in hindsight, I should have just maybe... Shut the briefcase. Just, yeah, <laughs> briefcase. But, it, but, I'm off, Jim. but funnily enough, I've obviously talked ill of the agent was it ill? I didn't think he possibly did the right thing when he shut that briefcase. He he was he was my still my agent at that point, believe it or not. I'd ended up signing with him after that for I don't know why I did. I don't know why. I'd still I think I'd still sign with him from that original time that he didn't do the deal for me. So he went in with Jim and negotiated my contract and came out and the numbers were a lot more than what I was on previous. I wasn't part of the negotiation, which I was a little bit uncomfortable about, bear in mind what had gone on Previous, 18 yeah. months ago with this agent and whatnot. So he comes out and he says, right, we've sorted it. Bear in mind at this time as well, the agent had said he didn't want my dad being, any, being part of the negotiation. Came out of the, um, of the office, right, there's the numbers. Okay, okay, so I'm looking down, three grand, three and a half, four, three years. Okay, right. But I've written into that contract a hundred thousand pounds worth of agent fees. Okay. I thought you were going to say hundred thousand pounds a year from club shop Mer merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> hundred thousand rallies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, is that again? Is that not do, do agents? Is that normal? Okay, fair enough. Anyway, so I've still got the same signing on fee. So the 35 and 35 still there. That's still the caveat, but, we, but the basic's gone up, okay? There's some appearance money in there. So there was, you know, it was an improvement, but obviously when I reflect back, I was thinking, you know, Ravinelli was on 40 grand a week. In, in, playing in the same team. In, and we're playing in the same team. Scoring the same amount of goals. the same amount of teams. I would say when I reflect back, I was probably the lowest paid centre forward in the Premier League at that particular time. You know, you think in 2000 and 2001, 2000, 2001, 
the, you know, everyone was earning decent money at the time. Maybe I rushed in a little bit too much and signed that contract. <laughs> so, but I was a bit uneasy with this hundred thousand pounds and I needed to, but if you paid cash, it was 60. You personally? Yeah, to pay the agent. So it was hundred thousand pounds, but if you paid cash, it was 60. Right, okay, a bit, bit uncomfortable about that. So where'd you, where'd you get 60,000 pound cash from? Well, by that time, I'd obviously we were going to be dipping into loyalty bonuses and the signing on fees. But to actually get cash yeah. to go up the sixty thousand pound cash, the you know, wanted to pay in instalments, right? So it wasn't sixty up front, so it needed to be paid in an X amount of instalments over X amount of time over the length of the contract. So again, right, paying hundred grand or sixty, it doesn't take a rocket science to work out probably which avenue you're going to go. Again, uncomfortable about what we're doing. Me and my dad were like, this doesn't feel right. So it was arranged to meet him in a pub car park with me five grand, first instalment, cash, in a brown paper envelope. There you go. Boom, first instalment. Again, fucking didn't feel quite right. Anyway, cut a long story short, what had happened is my agent at the time had negotiated his agent fees through me but had also, through the meetings with Jim Smith, had arranged his own fee with the club. Illegal. Cannot do that. You can take from one, but not the other. So you can, as an agent, you can either take your fee from the club or take the fee from the player. And he's, double, he's doubling up. Doubled up. Okay, we find that out through lengthy legal process. I end up, it turned out better for me. I ended up signing for a, t a company called SFX, which um, at the time were the best sports agency. I had David Beckham, Michael Owen, Stephen Gerrard, all the top players. I got in with them and they went through the due diligence legal process with that particular guy and went away. So I ended up not being out of pocket at all um, and signed with the best agency in the country. So you got your money back? Yeah, got my money back. Nothing about that situation from even the first contract I signed from that one. I suppose it left a little bit of a bitter taste in my mouth about that side of football to know that, that predominantly people are out for themselves and not looking to look after the best interests of, of the players player. at heart. And obviously I was signed that contract as well. So when we got relegated, it was, I suppose as most players had, you know, it was 25% cut for, for relegation as well. Mm. So, you know, I, I kind of left you know, financially, the Derby County side of things, nowhere near rewarded for what I would say the efforts and, and things compared to players around players. me at the time who were on obscene amounts of money. Mm. I just, I don't know. I suppose I just wish that in some respects that, you know, there were people out there who would have sort of helped me in that respect because the one person that helped me through everything was my dad. And then when I became a footballer, then all of these people circle around you like fucking vultures, yeah. you know, agents, financial advisors, all these people. Do you know what I mean? And, but, but the one person who had the best interest was me dad. And like, I probably regret when I look back and think that, look dad, these people know best because they look after him, 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 and him. It's followed on from last series where Bradley Orr just unearthed and the shit that goes on yeah. in football. People just getting shit on left, right, and centre. Taking center. advantage, yeah. Right? Because that char the same character trait of you going to the club shop and wanting to sticker in your car and embracing the moment of being a footballer is the same character trait that's going to be like, all right, this is what I do, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that, asking that questions. This is what, this exactly, is what happens. You're exactly right. And that, that, that was it. It was like, by that stage, I'd, I'd, I knew no different. I'd not signed... An, an, an upgraded contract at a, at a club. I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought that's what that's what happened. Yeah. They would not let us in to get our boots. They were told the, the the guy was told if Malcolm and Chris come in to get their boots, don't give them them. I was in a nine. I had a total of five grand. I played five times for Leeds and I got a grand in appearance. That's the amount of money I earned. Exactly the same for me calf. I was thinking, what the fuck they've done to me leg here? Then he's interested in Derby's Malcolm Christie. I was like, fucking, I'm going to Man U. <laughs> and I was putting the tin of beans on the shelf while the Sun, the sun newspaper were taking a photo of me in the shelves. He went, fucking hell. He said, your leg could have fucking snapped in half. I'd been playing and training the whole time with a broken leg. Like Grayson's voice, a, a clock. And he goes, I tell you what, I don't fucking care if he's disappointed. I'm not fucking picking him. And I had to sit by as a passenger and, and watch Faduka come in, Hasselbank, Yakuba, all these guys do what I should have been doing. 
And I couldn't do it. And I had to sit from the sidelines and watch 